Hello. Happy Tuesday, March 31st in the year of uh, 2020. I'm Danny Gregory, and it's time to party. It's time to party with a couple of pens. Get a big fat pen. How big, how fat, you decide. And a thin pen. How thin, how pennish, you decide. Make them the same color. Just make them really different. And some paper. Could be a sketchbook. Could be some parchment, some vellum that you've razored out of a, an ancient Bible. Could be, uh, I don't know. If you still have such a thing as paper in this digital analog age, procure it and have it standing by. So, today's a better day. Yesterday was Monday. You know, Monday. Today's Tuesday. Tonight, for the first time since we've gone into quarantine, we are going to be ordering in food from a restaurant. Taco Tuesday. I'm enormously excited about this. Plan to spend the entire day preparing for Taco Tuesday. There's even been some conversation about possibly having margaritas. If we can find one of the neighbors has limes on their tree and we can run in and steal a couple. We'll see. So tomorrow might be a, a later start than normal. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm excited. Now, one of the things that people have asked me, and by the way, thank you all for joining me. There's lots of you, some of whom are new uh, and some of whom are familiar. Na, Na N, who's in the middle of nowhere in the desert, that's interesting. Uh, Rebecca Brown, Lisa Stewart, Patrick Woods of Vermont, Sandy Hester in Nashville, Denise Villar in Pittsburgh, Banu in Turkey. Welcome. Kathleen in Florida and uh, many others. Sarah in Belgium and uh, Sabrina in Germany and my old pal Thistle. And my other old pal, Eliza, and many other old pals are here. So thank you all for being here. And hopefully you have your you have your equipment standing by. So just to waste a little bit more time, because honestly, don't we have endless amounts of time to waste? Not really. But um, I'm a few people have asked me, where are you and what's it like there? Fair question. Beyond this kind of uh, wall that you see behind me, which is actually a chimney outside of the chimney and I'm here in the garden surrounded by the various birds and so yesterday I decided after somebody had asked me that that I would make a little film and so I'm going to share that with you the world premiere of my quarantine film here we go Well, in case you're curious where I'm spending my detention, it is this hell hole. There's the palm tree. There's the pool. We have yet to go in the pool. It's warm, but it's not quite warm enough, but we have cleaned it. In fact, let me turn this thing around. This thing here was hanging down to the water. So we cut it. And when we started cutting it, I thought, oh, that's pretty good. Like, what else can we cut? And this entire thing here was filled with these sorts of branches. And as you can see, cut it, cut it, cut it, and threw it into the alleyway. Coming. Yes, this is the alleyway behind the house, full of all the stuff that we cut down. This is a jerry rig thing that I set up so that I could put my iPad on it, order the bits from Amazon, and uh, now I can more easily film what I'm drawing. 
this is what I had been using before. A, a box of IPA that was empty and I would just balance the iPad on top of it. This is a box full of drawings that I've been doing during the live drawing parties. My brother-in-law, Rick, runs the planetarium at ASU, Arizona State University. And he has been bringing home all kinds of gear to replicate his planetarium here on all these different computers. He keeps bringing home more and more of them. And he brought home this gigantic telescope, which we watched uh, the stars with last night. We checked out the moon up really up close, which was amazing. And that's my sister-in-law in the other room. She's uh, on conference calls all day long. And uh, yeah, my brother-in-law even just took over my desk outside with his 11th computer. So, you know, you gotta get along with people to survive in this business. This animal is Luna. Luna, come here, come here. Come on, good dog. Come on, good dog. I've been training her around the clock. She's gone from being a completely undisciplined monster to being a completely tame. <coughs> See what I mean? This is Marley. A couple days ago, he was really rough housing, horse playing with some other dogs. And uh, he's been limping ever since, so. Come on, Limpy. He's kind of old. I think he's 11 and he's kind of, well, not in the best condition, but he loves to play. And these other younger dogs took him to the woodshed. <laughs> and now he's limping. Yeah. We've been icing him and massaging him. I'm not sure if it's helped. The dogs dug this hole. When we were here last summer, they keep coming back. They fill it in and the dogs dig it up again. When they have friends over, they dig it even more. So these dogs dig digging. This is the fire pit. We spend most evenings, early evenings, sitting here watching the sun come down. This is the jigsaw we've been working on. It's impossible. I hope it's missing pieces because it's impossible. This is our favorite card game. We just dug this up. We might play it. I think it's interesting that it says that on the cover. Not very compelling. We've also been playing this game quite a lot. Probably the most, actually. We just started playing it. We didn't know how to play it. Now we do, and we're kind of obsessed with it. Yeah, so this is the street that I'm living on right now. And uh, as you can see, it's quiet. It's always quiet, except for these damn birds that insist on making a racket 24 seven. Um, let's see that place over there. The people just moved in like day before yesterday. Can you imagine they moved in in the middle of this mess? They have a really cool car here though. It's like some kind of Italian sports car. I've never seen the light before. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's nice here. It's nice, it's quiet. You can stand in the middle of the street and film whenever you want to. And there are lovebirds, you can hear them again. Difficult to find though. Um, what else? I've seen all kinds of birds here. Lots of hummingbirds, very aggressive. Um, we went on a hike and this is what happened. Well, we're in the middle or toward the end of a multi-mile hike here in the desert. Haven't seen any uh, bleached skeletons yet but it is uh, it's getting warm it's getting warm here considering that it's not even april yet but we're having a good old time and it's nice here i am with and uh it's good to this is the first time really that i've been out of the house for god knows how long and um Good to see the outside world is still here. Strange and forbidding as it may seem.
I didn't film the red-tailed hawk that we saw fly overhead, but he did, and he was very cool. That was on, on the hike. So yeah, you know, staying alive and uh, enjoying the heat. It's starting to get warmer. It's definitely starting to get warmer. Phoenix does not mess around when it comes to temperature. And, um, you know, it's going up a little bit each day, which is fine with me. I, I don't mind it. Uh, I'm trying not to get too much sun, but as my wife says, I, I can tan just by like looking at a drawing of the sun. And it does seem that uh, that's what's happening to me. So, but anyway, it's not too bad. And that's my report here from uh, quarantine where uh, the beat goes on for an indefinite amount of time. There you go. That's the scene. Thank you for your comments. Um, yes, so I, uh, my son, by the way, I think I mentioned to you a couple days ago, he and his girlfriend and their dog um, got into a van and they're now camping. He sent me pictures this morning. Maybe I'll share those with you in a day or two. But um, yeah, so we're all kind of out there we're out there we're far from home all of us but we're doing okay so hope you are too now meanwhile it's enough dithering we've wasted 17 minutes time for drawing with a pen so i'm going to show you a little video that explains what we're going to do and then we're going to do it here we go ready one two three okay you sit down you open your sketchbook, you pick up your pen, and you draw. Where I you do your whole drawing attention. with just that one pen. Is this hell hole? It's kind of boring, isn't it? One pen it's from laundry. beginning to end, when there are so many There's kinds of pens. To go in the pool. Using just one pen it's is warm, like but it's not quite warm doing enough, a painting with one color. Frank, Why not mix it up? You could start with a fat pen, this and then switch to a super skinny pen. your turn. Pick any object you like and draw it with a big pen and a little pen. All right. Uh, that assignment is actually from um, our newest course, which is called uh, Art boot camp so if you're interested in large amounts of fun art boot camp is for you uh it is a class where every day you get an assignment for two to six weeks and you will learn everything there is to know about drawing and painting check it out on our website meanwhile so pick your topic i'm going to draw this shoe of mine this is the shoe that i was wearing when i was hiking so uh, but pick anything you want, just any kind of simple object to draw, and uh, let's get to it. So first of all, pick your pen, um, and let's just go over to where my page is. Here it is. All right. 
Uh, let me just make fire up my camera again. Sorry, one second. All right, so I'm going to begin. I think I'm not going to use that quite that thick of a pen, but okay. I'm going to begin by just drawing. And we're going to do this quickly, right? The whole idea is to take, um, you know, draw it quickly, draw it boldly, and see where you get with it. Um, don't don't trouble yourself with details. Just do a quick and energetic drawing, you know, and uh, then we'll go in and we'll worry about the details some more once we have got this first layer down. But you know, we want to just be be bold, reductive. Yeah, my, my reductive, the right word, probably. It's a good word though, so I'll use it. And uh, we'll see. There we go. You hear my brother talking about astronomy gear stuff in the background, brother in law. So the beat goes on here in Office Central. In the work commune. So, yeah, so the idea is really what. What are you seeing initially, and how can you capture that? I think that's it. I think we're done with the big pen. Okay? So now I'm going to take a... So that is this big, fat art marker. And now I'm going to take um, a uniball, which is kind of thin. And I'm just going to enjoy myself drawing in the details. You know? And we're going to have a nice sort of combination of two different, it's almost like a collaboration. It'll have a collaborative feeling really between fat and thin, thick and thin, through thick and thin, we will do this drawing and uh, see what we get with it. So, um, I'm just gonna shut my mouth for a little bit and do some drawing. So if you're just listening to me, you can hear the birds in the background and that will do a horrible fly. The funny thing is that when you do this kind of drawing and you move really quickly during that first stage, you make decisions about where things are gonna go. But you then have to decide whether you're gonna hold on to them. So for instance, I, I'm not terribly happy with some of the things, decisions I made here. Oh, I see. See, I was, I was completely confused by what this was, this particular part of the shoe. And I didn't trust the earlier version of me. And I thought, uh, I got that lumpy bit wrong. But now I'm realizing, no, that's actually part of the lace that I wasn't seeing. So those are the kinds of discoveries that you make. Um, learning to trust an earlier version of me and to make sure that it please fly. It um, is, in fact, trustworthy and made good decisions. Do you ever have that feeling about yourself that uh, there's the current you and the past you, and you have to live with whatever decisions the past you made, but you're also making decisions for future you that's going to have to live with it? So, or maybe you don't have a split personality. Maybe you're not schizoid. I've never drawn this particular shoe before. It's actually kind of fun. There's a lot of it's a lot of stuff going on. So for now, I'm just still drawing a contour drawing. I'm not dealing with um, textures or shading or anything like that. And maybe in time I will see how, what time allows for.
What's interesting about this process, I think, is also seeing the, the different ways that different implements affect your ability to draw, but also to see. You know, I, I think it's kind of like when you go to the optometrists or opticians or ophthalmologists or eye doctor, and they put you in that little mach- that kind of, they put that thing on your head, and then they say, is this better or is that better? You know, and you, and you just kind of ratchet through these different lenses. In some ways, this process is comparable to that because... When you're drawing with a big fat pen, you're immune to the small details and you're just focusing on the larger shapes. And in some ways, you're focusing on the macro. You're drawing the forest rather than the trees or you're drawing the tree rather than the leaves. But when it comes to a a finer pen, you... Are noticing details because you know you can render them and that's also what happens over time as you're doing a drawing where you begin you know, I mean you could begin by just drawing a single detail and sometimes I do draw like that where you say to yourself okay I'm just gonna draw one detail and then I'm gonna draw the detail next to it and so forth and I'm going to work my way around this object in sort of small increments. It's kind of like, do you remember those things that David Hockney used to make where he would take Polaroids and he would take lots and lots of Polaroids and then collage them together to create a scene. So he would he would do, you know, even a giant landscape, but he would make it entirely out of these individual images. And that's sort of what this process could be like. It could be that you are just seeing things in terms of detail, but you can also look at things in broader strokes and look at the bigger pieces, the bigger relationships that they have with each other. And that could make for perhaps a better overall composition. Sometimes the the problem with drawing small detail, detail, detail is if you make a slight error in judgment at one point, you will find that it's getting increasingly wonky as you go around the entire subject, which is, you know, could could be what you want to be doing. Um, But it's definitely a different perspective. And and this style of drawing that we're doing here today allows you to, to some extent, combine both of those perspectives. So you're getting both the kind of bigger energy and um, macro look at things, but then you're also working on the details and the textures and the shading and so forth. So the shoe, as I said, has so many different types of textures within it, all the different materials that it's made out of. And, you know, I could spend all day probably drawing the shoe, but I have other plans for today, so I won't. Today's a day where I really want to do some proper writing, so that is my plan for the rest of the day. But it's good to get get some drawing done. It's kind of like uh, getting your meditation or your jog in um, and the early bird draws the worm, as they say. You'll go back to doing clearing some more brush. I paid the price for clearing that brush, I gotta tell you. Yesterday. I felt my lungs a little constricted. And as you can imagine, in this day and age, when you are also, as I am, a hypochondriac, you uh, 
become alarmed by any shortness of breath. And so I spent the part of the morning thinking, uh-oh, this is it, shortness of breath, putting my hand to my forehead a lot to see if I was getting a temperature, all those kinds of fun things. And then um, I did some vigorous exercise. I made a vigorous film for you. I did a bunch of work. And by dinner time, remarkably, my COVID-19 had receded and I was fine. So, yeah, so that's the price I paid for breathing in all that dust and dead leaves. So, there you have it. <clears throat> yes, that is, yes, it was. It was just brush. It was a brush with my fate. So, um, yeah, well, that's, that's a fat and thin. I do get, Patrick's right, I do need a fly swatter. We had an electric fly swatter here. Have you ever seen such a thing? And it stopped working. So um, now we may just have to be a rolled up newspaper. They came to pick up the garbage today. So that was the exciting bit of the morning. And the flies got very excited about that. Um, let me talk a bit about more about boot camp while you are working. Because as I said, this is an exercise from boot camp. The idea behind boot camp is that every day you get an assignment that helps you to build your basic skills. Spend 10 to 15 minutes getting in the assignment, understanding the video. The videos are like the best lessons that we've taught across Schedule School, plus a huge amount of new stuff that we've created. And, um, you know, you'll get an email with a, a curriculum for you, and you spend a little bit of time watching the video, a little bit of time or more time if you want to, doing an exercise like we just did. And um, then the next day you get another one. So every weekday, basically, you'll get one of those. Uh, and you can do it for six weeks. And if over six weeks, you will cover all the basics of drawing, all the basics of color, the basics of watercolor, and then you'll bring it all together and you'll make some really fantastic final pieces of art. Um, and also, if you want to, you could just do the first two weeks of it and just learn basic drawing skills. So uh, if you took the course beginning, you probably don't need the boot camp, although you might like it as a refresher. But if you haven't, this is definitely a great idea to get back to basics. But getting back to basics, even if you've been drawing for years, for me to do exercises and to think about the, the principles and the building blocks of drawing is enormously helpful. And it helps you to, to really to, to take new risks, to try new media, to remind yourself of some principles you might have strayed away from. I know I have. And uh, so, yeah, um, boot camp. And what could be a better time to do boot camp than now, right? Because after all, um, you know, we need some we need some structure to our days, I think, as we are here in quarantine. And getting that daily reminder, that daily little kind of prodding is really helpful. All right. Well, so, um, yeah, I think if you're a seasoned sketchbook school person, this course is probably not for you. But if you're new at all to any of this stuff, this is the thing. So, yeah. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for drawing with me today. It was very nice. Um, I think I'm going to have a friend join me tomorrow, and we're going to do some drawing together. I have this kind of project that I've been working on that I might share a bit of tomorrow. And uh, that's it. Good start to the day. Fat and thin. Time to, uh, to try some more. I'm gonna, I might do another one of these drawings this morning because it was really fun, and it... It, it just kind of plunges you into the middle of the drawing, right? Just put that big fat marker, gets down the basics, and then you can kind of noodle and doodle and cross hatch to your to your uh, heart's content. So um, thanks very much for being here with me today. I'll see you tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Have a good day. <laughs>